question. What do you get if you drop a piano down a coal shaft? Answer, A flat minor. <laughs> good morning, Bridge Church. It'd be wrong to start a Father's Day service without a good dad joke. So thank you, Chris Matthews. We've got one or two more of those lined up in the service this morning. Today we are celebrating Father's Day and we're not just celebrating uh, fathers. Uh, we're celebrating all men who are a great influence across the church and beyond and actually sons as well. Uh, every guy uh, in the family of God. And uh, for me, I lost my father in my early 20s and I know the pain of some loss that some of us will be feeling around this time as well. Some remembrance, some who have fathers who are distant, who have fathers who perhaps weren't there, fathers who were close, fathers who were excellent. But ultimately, we're here to celebrate the role of spiritual fatherhood of our heavenly father and uh, the biological fathers as well. And so really we want to turn our attention to God this morning in everything that we do. And so we've got some great things lined up in the service, a few little things that will celebrate those of you that uh, have the joy of being uh, fathers to small children, to older children, to teenagers and beyond. And, uh, Dave Wade's going to be sharing from the son's perspective. Alex is going to be sharing from the father's perspective. And uh, we've got a few story little bits in there as well. And, you know, for me, I had some great role models in my life. Dave Wade, Stuart Vickers were two of those that played that role of spiritual fatherhood. But we also play the role of spiritual fathers as well. And so we're celebrating all of those things this morning. Let me just turn your attention to the scriptures in Matthew 6 before we worship together. And this is what it says. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And then he goes on to the Lord's Prayer, our father who is in heaven. Now, I don't know if you know much about the history of this scripture, but when Jesus introduced the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob as father, it's probably and almost certainly the first time anybody has ever used that term for God, a relational term. It was almost a foreign idea to the people of Israel. When Jesus said, pray to your father, it took on a whole new dynamic that God is our heavenly father, that we're in a relationship with God. We're sons and daughters of the father who is in heaven. And so it's him who we're worshipping today. We're going to praise him. We're going to sing some songs. Maybe you want to reflect and let these words wash over you. Maybe you want to sing along at home. The words are going to be up on screen. But we're celebrating the ultimate father, our heavenly father, the one who gives us grace, mercy, love, peace, sets us right, and has given us a hope of eternal life. Let's worship together. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Sing it now.
that you've done for me. All 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 that you've done for me. We're celebrating Father's Day today. Um, there's so many great fathers in the world that are, who are being celebrated and, and honored. Uh, and I just want to honor a few things today. Um, one is my earthly father who passed away when I was 17. Uh, he was the hero in my life. Uh, although there was a void that was created when I lost him, um, I felt God, my father, uh, was bringing peace in those moments and as I became a Christian and grew as a Christian I could feel uh, my spiritual father my heavenly father became the hero in my life and he taught me many things he continues to teach me things but he's also a loving a gentle dad uh, like my earthly father was um, and for those of us who have lost uh, our dads uh, uh, and are uh, kind of struggling may the song encourage you may the song remind you that God the Father loves us and he is and will always be our greatest dad um, so let's sing the song in worship and and honor the Father uh, who sits over all things who is incredibly powerful and never leaves us or forsakes us morning church my name is Chris and I'm going to sh just share a few thoughts about uh, being a dad about being uh, a father I remember when uh, my uh, children were born I've got two children and um, when they were first born uh, I just yeah I just it was amazing uh, just to be to witness all that and to be to be part of that experience and to hold them when you know when they've been had their checks done and that and you get to hold them for the first time um, and just this little bundle of life in your arms and then all of a sudden you, you feel so responsible and um, you just want to do the best you can for them you want to 
you want to love and you want to protect and you don't want anyone to, to hurt them or to damage them. And I think God's like that with us. He wants to protect us and he wants to love us. Um, he, he wants to, he doesn't want anyone to hurt us. And, um, but also I've got uh, two children that live at home with us. Uh, so I see, um, as it's been a stepdad as well. And, um, I see that more of as a, a, a like a, a father figure uh, in in the house, so I can try my best to encourage and and help the boys to grow and develop into young men of God. Um, I don't always get it right. I think I probably get it wrong more than I get it right. Um, but we keep trying every day. Um, as oftentimes I'll sit with my head in my hands, thinking, "Well, I didn't really do that very well. Uh, I didn't handle that situation all that well." Um, but we ask God for to guide us and to help us to use the right um, tools um, to encourage our children. And um, I remember the first time that my children turned around and said, hey, I love you, Daddy. Uh, it was just to hear your children say, I love you, um, is, yeah, it's, it's indescribable. I can't think of the words to describe it. And I often wonder how does God feel when we say, I love you, Lord. I love you, God. If he feels like I do when my children say, I love you, that I don't know how he contains himself, really. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, I, I count it such a privilege to be a father, uh, to be a stepdad. And um, I just ask God that he would give me the right tools to continue to help the the children develop and to grow and um, to encourage them in life you know, to do to do the right things and I know we all you know sometimes learn by doing mistakes and things like that but I just pray that uh, that God would help me to be the best dad to be the best stepdad that I can be uh, for our children have a blessed morning and we'll see you soon bye bye morning I woke up opened the curtains and through the window I could see a load of birds all stuck together flying past. I think they were a flock of Velcros. Hi guys, happy Father's Day. I hope you're doing okay today, all you men out there. I hope you're finding some creative ways to be able to celebrate today. It's my privilege this morning to be able to just share a couple of thoughts with you about being a dad. Uh, I became a dad while I was a teenager. Uh, I have three kids, uh, Jordan, Keris and Reese. all of them absolutely incredible. It's an honour and a privilege to be their dad. But it's quite scary. Uh, when I was a teenager becoming a dad, it was probably the scariest thing I had ever done until that time. And if I'm really honest, um, then there are still days today where I get a little bit scared because it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes, but it also, like I said, a great honour and a great privilege. God um, challenged me uh, with something uh, right from the very start of being a dad, and he continues to challenge me with that today. And it's that thought that I want to bring to each and every one of us this morning. And it's the thought that can help all of us, actually. It's not just applicable to dads. It's not just applicable to mums. It's not just applicable to, to any particular person, but applicable to each and every one of us, because we all have relationships. And really, when it comes down to it, being a dad is all about relationships. In my house growing up, uh, the one thing really that was missing, uh, I had lots of siblings. Uh, I had a mum who loved us um, and we had some tricky times, but we, we knew that she loved us. The one thing really missing uh, was a consistent uh, father, a consistent dad, a consistent father figure, if you like. Um, and that itself was to become one of my biggest challenges. Uh, and I very, very clearly uh, remember God saying to me, um, you need to be present. Now, I understood what God meant by that. And it, it wasn't that I was just to be sticking around. It was that I was to be present in every aspect of my kids' lives. It's not about just being in the same house or being in the same room. It's about being present. Let me give you an example. 
I love to watch the rugby. I love to watch Wales play in the Six Nations. They're my favourite games. Now I can be sat in my lounge at home with, and there could be a hundred people in the lounge uh, watching with me, but I am not there. Uh, my presence is not there. I, my body is there. I'm physically in that room, uh, but my head and my heart is elsewhere. My head and my heart is in the game. It's in the game. The challenge has always been, Alex, are you present? Where is your head and where is your heart? How do I know that presence is important? Well, we look to some of the attributes of God. Um, and God is omnipresent. Now, you won't find that word in the Bible, but there are plenty of places we do find uh, scripture that backs up God's omnipresence. Jeremiah 23, uh, verse 23 and 24 say this. Am I a God who is only close at hand, says the Lord? No, I am far away at the same time. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and all the earth, says the Lord. Presence is important to God. And presence is key when we are looking after our kids. And I don't just mean being in the same room. I mean being ultimately and intimately involved in their lives. Now, we can't be omnipresent. We can't go stalking them. That's that's bad parenting. Believe me, um, that's bad parenting. But it is about being constantly present in their lives through the physical, through the practical, but also and very, very importantly, through the spiritual aspects of their lives. Our kids are always learning. Our children are always learning. Make sure that they are learning from you. Make sure that they are learning from you. Be present. One practical thing uh, that I've had to do recently when I was reminded of this um, is put your phone down. Maybe turn off that game from time to time. Be inconvenienced a little bit because that means you're in the moment. That means you are being present. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Take care, look after yourselves, and I will hopefully see you all face to face very soon. Happy Father's Day. Okay, dads, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, some of you've already let me know how uncomfortable you were in last week's meeting. So tonight, we're gonna try to respect each other's boundaries. What? Tonight we've also got a guest with us, David. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hey guys, I'm David. David. Hey, David. How many kids do you have, David? None, at least not at the moment. Uh, my wife is pregnant and uh, she should be delivering any day now. Mm, that's great. So Super. Oh, great. Awesome. Who'd like to go first? Anyone. Anyone. I'll go. Perfect. Todd, yes. My daughter and I went to the mall and she said she wanted to take the stairs to the second level. And I said, I don't trust stairs because they're always up to something. <laughs> Todd, I'm sorry that happened. Okay. Yeah. I encourage you to try to resist the urge to make jokes like that. Yeah. My turn? Okay. Can I go? Okay. Yesterday, actually, my daughter got home and she asked me how my day was. And I said, well, a guy tried to sell me a coffin, but that's the last thing I need. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. that joke is dead on arrival. Because it's the last thing I need. David, <laughs> how about you? Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't say This is a safe zone. Just jump on in. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just scared of being a dad. I'm afraid I'm gonna start telling bad jokes just like my dad. Well, it might be in our nature. We can fight against it. Hey, speaking of nature, I tried to catch some fog yesterday. I missed. <laughs> M-I-S-T. Oh, yeah. You're a monster. I, this is where the boundary is. I'm done. This is where you are. Hello? Really? Okay, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. That was Julie. Her water just broke. I guess the baby finally ran out of womb. <laughs> 
I'm gonna be a dad. Don't you think you should be going? Oh yeah. So I told my wife she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. I have a confession to make. I have an addictive personality. For those of you that know me, that will come as no surprise or shock whatsoever. What that essentially means is that when I'm into something, I'm really, really into something. And one of the things I get a little bit addictive with is particular TV shows. If I like a TV show, I'll watch it over and over and over again. Uh, or if it's a box set, I won't just watch one episode. I'll watch all like 57 in a row, staying up until five in the morning. I just get hooked on particular TV programs. And one of the things that I've really started to enjoy recently with Sean is the program Long Lost Family, both the US version and the UK version. For those of you who have not seen that program, it's essentially about uh, a child uh, that maybe has been put up for fostering or adoption and they don't necessarily know who their parents or their father or their mother are. And they go on this journey of looking to try and find them. And the hosts of the show uh, inevitably help them find this person or maybe the parent has passed on, but they get to meet new siblings or cousins, etc., etc. And of course, uh, with the way that these programmes are, they're quite emotional. Uh, they play the emotional music at the end of the show. And, you know, more often than not, it's a happy reunion. And on days like this, you know, Father's Day, Mother's Day, we often talk about the perspective of a father or the perspective of a mother, and we link that to God. And rightly so. Uh, Alex has already shared with you today about the perspective of fatherhood and what that really means from his perspective, but also from God's perspective as a father over us. But the reality is this. Where there are fathers, where there are mothers, there are also sons and there are also daughters. Of course, on days like this, we always want to be sensitive to people who have a range of emotions when recalling both either being a son or a daughter or recalling their experiences with a father or a mother or a lack of a father or a mother. And we always want to be sensitive to the emotions that bring up during times like this. But at the same time, whenever we talk about these things, we have to talk about God and his perspective. And when we talk about God and his perspective, we're able to talk about us and our perspective. Because you see, when we talk about Father God, we have to ask the question, who is he the father of? Well, he is the father of you and he is the father of me. So when we have Father God, we have sons and daughters of God. And that's just what I want to take a few moments to talk about right now. I want to talk about the power of sonship. Sonship means both sons and daughters. I want to talk about the power of what it means to be a child of God. In the Bible, we read the accounts of Jesus and his baptism. Jesus, the son of God who had come from heaven to earth, and he came down to live a life as a man and ultimately to die for our sins. You know that story. But there's an account early on, uh, just before he begins his public ministry, where he is baptised. And it tells us that as he came up out of the water after being baptised by John, the heavens opened and a voice came down from heaven and said these three incredible things. It starts off by saying this, this or you are my son. And I want you and I to know that there's a voice from heaven that not just once, but daily says over you and over me, you are my son, you are my daughter. And after he said that over Jesus, he said these two incredibly powerful things about what it means for Jesus to be his son. He says, this is my son or you are my son whom I love and with whom I am well pleased. And so as I kind of draw this service to a close this morning, I just want to talk for a few moments about what those two things mean for you 
and for me. Because what God said over Jesus, the son, he says over you, the son, and over you, the daughter, whom I love. John chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God is love, the book of Corinthians tells us. And it tells us the attributes of love. Love is patient, it's kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it's not easily angered. Love keeps no record with wrongs. Love delights in the truth and does not delight in evil it always trusts always hopes always perseveres love never fails so if that is what love is and god is love then god is patient god is kind god doesn't envy he's not boastful he's not proud he's not rude he's not easily angered he keeps no record of wrongs god always trusts he always hopes he always perseveres god's never fails so when God says he loves you and he loves me we need to understand as children of God we can speak those things over our lives we can remind ourselves whether we have had outstanding parents whether we have not had outstanding parents whether we have had one or both of our parents not around even in the the humanity and the human uh, feelings that are associated with that, with God, we can say without a shadow of a doubt, he loves us, he cares for us, he's passionate about us, he never gives up on us. It's a little bit like that story in Luke 15, where Jesus tells three parables, and the third and final parable is the parable of the lost son, The son that walks away from the father's house. The son that spends all of the father's money recklessly. The son that comes back to the house thinking, well, I'm I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. Uh, Maybe he'll accept me again as a servant or a hired hand. That son didn't realise that even through all the time he was away, even through all the time he's making his way back to the house, the father was there hoping, waiting, yearning for his son. And of course, as he meets him, he runs to him. And it doesn't tell us that he takes a steady walk or a nice jog. He hitches up his garment, which in that culture was an incredibly embarrassing thing to do, and runs towards his son, throws his arms around him. He loved him so much. He was always his son and always will be his son. You are always a child of God. The moment you accept him into your heart, that sh- that sonship becomes a reality once again. For once we were distant from God and now we have been drawn close again. And the second thing that he says over you and over me is with you, I am well pleased. If you're anything like me, you strive for acceptance. I guess we all do that. It's part of our human nature. We want to know that we're validated. We want to know that people approve of us. We want to know that people like us. We want to know that people think fondly of us. And often we think that if we do certain things, that acceptance from people around us will grow and grow and grow. But the reality is with God, he says this, with you, I am well pleased. Note that in that passage, that Jesus hadn't done anything on the earth of significance up to that point. He'd just lived his life. He'd not done any healings, any miracles, no raising from the dead. Yet God said, with you, I am well pleased. You see, friends, we don't live for the approval of God. We live from the approval of God. In view of God's mercy, Romans 12, offer your lives as a living sacrifice. God comes first, our response always comes second. That is the crux, that is the foundation of the Christian life. We do not live in order to get a response from God. We respond in response to what God has already done for us. He loves us, he's poured his grace upon us, he's forgiven us. All of those things that make us who we are, God came first and in response to those things we offer our lives as a living sacrifice so on this day on this father's day let's not forget that from a spiritual perspective 
every day is Father's Day. From a spiritual perspective, every day is Son Day. Every day is Daughter Day. You are a child of God every single day. Every time you wake up in the morning, why don't you remind yourself, I'm a child of God. I'm loved by God. He is well pleased over me. And because of that, I will live my life in a way that shows how grateful I am for what God has done for me. And if you don't know him as your heavenly father, what better opportunity than today to make that decision to follow him with all your heart, your soul, your mind and your strength. You are a child of God. Live in that blessing today. God bless you. Thank you guys for those incredible words and incredible messages. Hopefully you've been uplifted on this Father's Day and uh, I've certainly been encouraged, challenged and inspired. And uh, Father God, we do thank you for your love. We thank you that you are ultimately our Heavenly Father, that there is none like you, God. And the moment we put our faith in Jesus, the moment we accept you into our lives, Jesus, that we become adopted into the family of God, we become sons and daughters of our heavenly father and so we thank you for that blessing in jesus name everybody said amen hey guys we hope you can join us uh this week we've got a prayer meeting and communion service on live being streamed on youtube wednesday 6 30 p.m it'd be great to have you along there also there's a youth youtube live that goes out friday 6 30 p.m over on the bridge youtube account uh, and also if you want to submit a prayer request as well at any time you can head over to the website on wearebridge.org forward slash prayer if you want to like share and subscribe as well youtube and facebook uh profile the video more when you do those kind of stuff so it just helps people see the message connect with the church more and uh may the grace of god be on you bye bye lad gave me my 60th birthday card last week I looked at him with a tear in my eye and said that's very nice Ben but one would have done <laughs>